Five Bible. Sequence time. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. Commit liftoff. Hey, welcome to SWAT Radio. It's uh, Doug McCary of His Light Ministries. And uh, sorry about that. We were a little hot there on the mic, weren't we, Jeremy? Uh, anyway, uh, Doug McCary of His Light Ministries, and it is Thursday, our guest day on SWAT Radio. Today is October 12th, and, um, you know, uh, we continue to, you know, remind people to be in prayer um, for what's going on over in Israel, it is just a, it's an awful thing, and um, the, the the images that are coming out and is is doing what the terrorists want, and uh, that they they want that. And so, my encouragement to you is to not turn away from the the problems that are going on over there, but. Uh, uh, be careful because some of the images are pretty disturbing and you can see a lot on the internet now. And I just really want to warn you um, that, that it's just some, some of those images that you get them in your head, you won't, it'll be hard to get them out. So don't turn away, pray for them, keep up with what's going on. Um, it, it, it's, it's really bad, but uh, it is our guest day and I'm really excited about a guest that we've had on several times before uh, Dr. Uh, Sam Nadler. And uh, Sam is a uh, Messianic Jew, and he has a ministry called Word of Messiah Ministries. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm really excited to have him on to just talk about, one, some of the things that, um, that they may be partnering with over there, how we can get involved. A lot of people are wanting to know, hey, how can we lock arms with people? What can we do? And so I reached out to Sam the other day, and he agreed to be on. So, Sam, welcome back to SWAT Radio. Shalom, Doug. It's wonderful to be back. Shalom, everyone. Oh, shalom, shalom, brother. Uh, Sam, I am just heartbroken for the, the, the nation of Israel right now in a lot of ways. But... Um, but I, I, I just have to ask you, as, as somebody who I know you're, you have this huge heart for the Jewish people, um, and uh, as somebody who has been ministering to them for many, many years, h- how are you and your wife right now? What, where, where are y'all's direction, like your focus in trying to pray for these people? Can you help us with that a little bit, how our listeners can pray for that nation um, and pray for the people yeah. there? Mm-hmm, yes. Uh, well, uh, we want to do a number of things here. Uh, prayer, first of all, we go over about how to pray. That's vitally important. Now, we are commanded to pray. as bo- We're Bible believers. Uh, we know that in Psalm 122, verse 6, mm-hmm. uh, David wrote, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that the word for pray, pray for the peace, pray, Ta'alu, is a command. Mm -hmm. In other words, God put into the imperative his priorities for us. Mm -hmm. And so he has called us uh, as part of who we are, uh, to pray and pray for the peace. Mm-hmm. The one thing Israel needs is peace. Yes. And for those of us who know the Messiah, and as you know, Doug, I've been a follower of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as many of our listeners uh, reckon it. Uh, I've been a follower of his for 51 years, mm-hmm. uh, for which I'm very thankful. Uh, but in any case, He's the only one who can bring peace. He's the Prince of Peace. So we need to pray. That's what we are called to do, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then how to pray. Mm -hmm. Well, we're to pray, first of all, as Paul put it, this is a new covenant uh, matter as well. Paul says in Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire... And prayer to God for Israel 
is that they might be saved. Mm. And so let's understand what we just quoted there. The apostle to the Gentiles, Paul, wanted all Gentile believers to understand uh, that as the apostle, as their apostle, he is modeling for them what is normative for their prayer life. Mm. And so we need to pray for Israel's salvation. But let me remind you what Paul said. He said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is there. My heart's desire precedes prayer to God. Mm -hmm. You need to have in your heart the right desire, the godly desire. Mm -hmm. This is what David said when he said, may they prosper who love you, or may those who love you be secure, depending on translation. Mm -hmm. In other words, why do we ask in prayer? Why do we pray? Because the love of God, the love of Messiah constrains our hearts. Mm. And therefore, we pray for what God can do, provide peace through the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. This is first and foremost. Now, in light of the present circumstances, let's understand together, we love the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. I, with the depth of my heart, I love the Palestinian people. In fact, we are told not only uh, to pray, as Paul put it, uh, for Israel, but he also wrote in 1 Timothy 2, 1, pray for all people. God loves everybody, including the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And so we want the Palestinians to be saved. God does not desire the death of the wicked but that they may repent and live. Mm -hmm. And so we want to understand we do not desire their death. We want their repentance. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, we need to deal with the issue of the war. In other words, the, Israel has been attacked. Mm -hmm. And in defense, they are now fighting back. This is biblically considered a just war. Mm -hmm. A just war is when you fight in defense of your country, your home, your family, uh, or self-defense. Mm -hmm. That is permitted in Scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, and so on one hand, we pray for a just outcome that Hamas, the terrorist organization, would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Why? So the Palestinian people can be uh, given opportunity to be free from them. Mm -hmm. In other words, we see Hamas is hurting the Palestinian people as well as others who they are terrorizing. Mm -hmm. And so we want to pray for the destruction of Hamas and all evil agencies, mm -hmm. whether it be Hezbollah uh, or any other terrorist group from around the world. Mm -hmm. We pray for their destruction. I pray for North Korea. I pray for the destruction of the North Korean government in order that the North Korean people would be set free. Mm -hmm. This is how we pray when we're dealing with terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we pray for the Palestinian people. We pray that they might repent and come to salvation in Messiah Yeshua and Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And so we pray that we care about them. But on the other hand, we pray for a just outcome to a just war. Mm. And so with Israel being uh, uh, horribly attacked, by, and you mentioned very care clearly, and I, I, I agree with you, all the images and all that's on the Internet are just horrible, uh, just terrible to see what has been done uh, with the horror that has been conducted by Hamas against the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And so we want to understand it's a just war. Mm -hmm. So when people think about it, that's how they need to pray. One, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We want salvation for Israel. We also want salvation for the Palestinian people, mm -hmm. for all people, uh, uh, whether they're called Palestinians this week or Jordanians or whether they're called well, you know, that's a hey, Sam, that's a good a good point. You know, a lot of people ask me, 
who are the Palestinian people? Like, it, are they are they Arabs from yeah. it, you yeah. know? Who are they like? Yeah. Like I I yeah. meet uh-huh. like yeah. Who can you yeah. can you help with that a little bit? Like how that uh-huh. term is uh-huh. is it pretty inclusive of a lot of people other than Israel there? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, listen, listen. Uh, when we look at history, we want to remember. Uh, that the enemies of ancient Israel were the Philistines. Yes. The the Latin way of saying Philistine is the Palestinians. Mm-hmm. In other words, uh, that is a Latinized form of Philistines. Okay. And so what happened uh, following uh, you know the following World War One, uh, the Ottoman Empire. Uh, was divvied up amongst the allies, Hmm. and England received all of what is now uh, the Promised Land and Jordan and uh, that whole area there. That was all uh, part of the England. England was uh, was in control of it. And so when they controlled it, they called the whole area Palestine. Mm -hmm. You say, what what do you mean? What about Jordan? There was no Jordan. Mm -hmm. There was no Palestinian people, because in the Palestinian area that England called it were Jews, Muslims, Christians, and they all were considered Palestinians. Really? That's <laughs> By funny. English reckoning. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're all, and when you look at you, you, uh, this postage stamps that come out of Palestine <laughs> sent by Jewish people, because that's the name of the area prior to 1947. Wow. And okay. then, uh, then when, uh, when the War of Independence took place, uh, then, of course, uh, the, there was the Jordan on the west side of uh, uh, of the Jordan River, mm-hmm. on the east side, partly of the Jordan River. And there was Israel on the west side of the Jordan River. Mm-hmm. And so there were a number of, of uh, Muslim Arabs uh, in the West Bank, uh, on the west side of the river, uh, who... Uh, were part of uh, what would have been called Israel, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, And even today, uh, there are many Muslim Arabs who are citizens of Israel. But in any case, a lot of refugees from the War of Independence, a lot of Muslim refugees went to Jordan and live in camps. They still do to this day. Uh, Camps all over for refugees from from that. Uh, And... uh, and 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 the, in 1960, uh, in the 1960s, uh, there came about following the Six Day War, mm-hmm. uh, there became a group called the PLO, mm-hmm. Palestinian Liberation Organization. Uh, they were they called themselves Palestinians. Mm-hmm. They were merely uh, Muslim Arabs from that area. They made up the name. Okay. Uh, prior to that, they may have been called Jordanians okay. uh, or whatever they might have been. Mm. Uh, but nonetheless, they then called themselves Palestinians. That's where uh, it became. And then, of course, as we're familiar, moving on, the Palestinian Authority mm-hmm. uh, took control of the West Bank uh, and therefore formed a kind of government headquartered in Ramallah. Uh, but the word Palestinian, as I've given you a bit of a history lesson. No, this that. is good because people are asking about this, and I think it's a, I think it's important because right now most people, at least that I talk to, if you say Palestinian, they just think a Muslim who lives in Israel. <laughs> you know, I mean, so yeah. this is instructive. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Israel is a democracy, and in Israel. Uh, is, uh, of course, the largest Jewish population in the world. But, the, uh, but besides that, there's also a rather large Muslim population and Christian population, and they're all citizens. And uh, there are Muslim members of the Knesset, that's the parliament in Israel. See, I didn't Muslim, even know that. <laughs> uh, the Knesset. 
Uh, and so we want to understand that's what it's like in a democracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no prejudice against the Muslims because they're citizens of the country and some are fighting uh, in the in the war. They're in the Israeli army. There are uh, Arab Christians and Arab Muslims mm-hmm. who are in is in the Israeli uh, who are Israeli citizens and therefore in the army. They're in the IDF. And they're fighting uh, for their uh, land. Wow. That's, that's... Yes, of course, they're part of the IDF. They're, they're fighting for their country. Uh, uh, and so we need to broaden our thinking on this very carefully. Well, that's why I, uh, I really to... wanted you to speak to that. Uh, you know, one of the questions <laughs> that came up, a lot of pictures have been shown of the Wailing Wall. And one of the question yeah. is, why is there no one at the Western Wall praying right now? Because usually it's flocked. I mean, usually there's... A lot of people there but they've shown quite a few still shots of it and 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 current time shots where there doesn't seem to be that is it just because i mean it seems to me that would have mobilized well, people to go there to pray you know well yeah, of course uh, if if in fact if in fact there are, is no one at the wailing wall praying it's because of security reasons okay if that is the fact, then that is the reason, for security reasons. Yeah, because don't the Jews believe, the Jewish people that are not Messianic, don't they believe that uh, that's where the presence of God is there at that wall? Or am I off on that? Well, they consider it sacred. Yes, yeah, sacred. They do consider it sacred. The last remaining part, it's an outer wall, an outer wall of the temple that stood uh, until 70 A.D., when it was the temple was destroyed by the Roman army, okay. and so it's the outer wall uh, that was around the temple, the western wall, as it's called, mm-hmm. around the temple. And so, because of its proximity to the temple, it's considered sacred, mm-hmm. holy ground in that regard. Uh, mm-hmm. To those to people who are. Uh, part of Judaism, you know, a non-Messianic Judaism, Mm -hmm. uh, as you're aware, Doug. Yes. Uh, Well, um, I I just was, uh, you know, I was wondering about that because uh, one of the the news broadcasts said that a lot, they were interviewing somebody from Israel, and they just said there are a lot of secular Jews over there today. Uh, And I just wondered if, if... there was something that had to do with that. But I, I want to, uh, one more question about what's going on right now, and then I want to kind of get into your ministry, mm-hmm. is is there uh, messianic ministries that are on the ground that are either doing relief work or ministry work that we can lock arms with? People here, if they want to support or lock arms with people who yeah. are there now, are there uh, ministries sure. and and how would you recommend we proceed to be able to do that for people that are listening? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, if they go to wordofmessiah dot org, word of messiah one word word of messiah dot org, uh, there is a place to give to humanitarian aid. We're working with an agency uh, in Israel. And so this way you get tax-deductible credit uh, if you go to wordofmessiah.org, and there is a link there for you to give to help with humanitarian aid in Israel. And I and see it right there. I'm on your website now, and it just right there, it's got a uh, the flag, the Israeli flag. It says, we stand with Israel. Yes. Please pray and support. Donate right. now. You just yes. click on it, and yes. that takes you right there. Right. And That's I just want to exactly. give an endorsement real quick, Sam, that uh, as long mm-hmm. as I've I met you through Barry Leventhal, he introduced us, and uh, Barry uh, mm-hmm. helped start Christian Family Chapel here in the Jacksonville area, and uh, our good brother mm-hmm. is in the presence of the Lord now. But, um, yes. but y- you, as long as I've known you, you've been solid and so I just want to let anybody who's listening in Virginia, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, or through the Internet, uh, wherever you're listening, you can know that if you give money through Word of Messiah, it's going to go to 
the people over there in Israel. I can promise you that. And yeah. it, it will go through yeah. a guy who has invested his life in training Messianic Jews and leaders to help plant Messianic churches. And um, and so that website, yeah. again, is Word of Messiah dot org word of messiah dot org and click on the donate yeah. now and and sam i hope people will yeah. give because there are a lot of hurting true. people over there right now and uh and and we oh, need to be able to to help yes uh, yes it's a, it's a, as you will well well understand this war uh and so there's many refugees fleeing from the south mm-hmm. who now made homeless by hamas mm-hmm uh, who in many cases have run with a, with a shirt on their back. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're in desperate need, in great need of humanitarian aid just to help them. Mm-hmm. And so even though uh, we, we do ministry over there, as many of our people who pray for us, who get our newsletter, you can go to get our newsletter by go, but through wordofmessiah.org. On there is a way to get our newsletter if you want to learn more. Uh, and they support us in our congregation evangelistic and congregation planting work there and around the world. Uh, but this particular, uh, what we're talking about, what Doug and I are talking about right now, uh, that link to, to click on uh, is for humanitarian aid because of the great need right now, mm-hmm. because of the great need. And so this is something we're encouraging people to do. And we want to get the good news out. We don't believe there's sal- eternal salvation apart from faith in Yeshua, mm-hmm. faith in Jesus. Uh, so we understand that. But at the present time, uh, there is a need for humanitarian help. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to be doing. We want to show, you know, let your, uh, remember what, you, what the Messiah taught us. Uh, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so our good works precede our good words. Mm -hmm. We earn the right to be heard. Mm -hmm. People may, because we have the good news, the only good news for a lost humanity, people can therefore think, well, they've got to listen to me. Well, people have a free will. They may not listen to you. So we need to earn the right to be heard. Mm -hmm. We need to show them we really care about them. We want to help them. Uh, and as well as they share the good news uh, as well. So we want to do good works to earn our, the right to share good words, mm-hmm. the good news uh, with people. So we encourage people, uh, be prayerful, and uh, give as the Lord has uh, blessed you to give. Yes, and uh, Sam, I wanted to ask you, I, 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 I wasn't entirely asked, I did have another question. Are you personally involved or connected to any messianic people over there either in the gaza area or oh, in sure. in the area right now where people are uh, oh yeah no, are well yeah absolutely absolutely i'm i'm very i'm in touch with uh praying with uh talking to minister and when i when i'm able to i mean my flight was canceled we're supposed to leave this sunday mm-hmm. for israel with a whole range of ministry things I was involved in, uh, my materials, my books. For those interested, we have a bookstore at wordofmessiah.org. Mm-hmm. You can see uh, the books we have that are for evangelism and discipleship, mm-hmm. and our books and materials are translated in Israel, in Hebrew, mm-hmm. translated into Hebrew and Russian and Amharic, that's Ethiopian. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we minister to the various groups over there. Uh, and so I have a whole range of ministries involved in. Uh, and so I was talking, you know, as I was talking to one of my friends there in Be'er Sheva, he was in his bomb shelter. Hmm. <laughs> We're praying together while he's in the bomb shelter. Oh uh, so I pray for them. We're in touch. We're, uh, we're, you know, my heart, I can't, my heart is just so broken over the, over the horror that has taken place. Well, we were there um, last we year. God. We we were in Beersheba yeah. last year uh, when we uh, yeah. we stayed down there, and you know, it, yes. it, it, it's it, people don't. A lot of people don't realize how small Israel is. <laughs> I mean, in the sense of <laughs> you 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 can cover a lot of ground pretty quick going from place to oh, place. No. Uh, oh, yeah. And so, okay. uh, I, I what um, well we we will 
pray for your friend and and i hope that you get to go i oh. wanted to let our listeners know about a resource you have that i think would be good for them to hear it's called the israel factor and yeah. uh it's it, one of the things that's good about this book and um my wife and i got it uh, i think last time you were on is that mm-hmm. do you just explore the the basic doctrines of faith in yeshua um but you you do it from a jewish perspective and you know i yes. as, as i've led these groups over to israel over the last uh, nine years uh going over there has given me so much understanding even about jesus and 90 percent of the time uh, the things that i thought he was saying were not necessarily what he was saying because he was referring back to old testament passages that the jews would have known or the the jewish people and so uh, i really appreciate you taking the time to write about these things in the israel factor and and if you go to the word of messiah.org go to his bookstore and you can get the book and just order it right there and it it's really a helpful book about because a lot of people write Mm. israel out of the equation don't they sam (laughs) <laughs> don't they? Yes. That's why it's called the Israel factor. We factor back in what God never factored out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we want to understand our faith in light of the fact that God never factored Israel out. What does that mean? It only shows his faithfulness all the more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I go into detail after detail, but the book is just plumb full of wonderful, edifying information to build up the believer uh, in the faith to help them understand the faith that we have and, uh, even more fully and more completely. It's just wonderful knowing a whole, having a whole Bible approach, you know, the whole issue that the New Covenant, and many don't realize that this was prophesied uh, in Jeremiah, mm-hmm. uh, that it was prophesied as Israel's security blanket. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't understand. It says a New Covenant I'll make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And so we want to understand that the new covenant that we take for granted is Israel's security blanket. Mm -hmm. And so we go into all of these matters to enrich the faith of every believer, uh, that we might rejoice in the Lord and even be more effective witness to the Jew first, as well as to the Gentile. Yeah, and unfortunately, some of these things have been kind of omitted in a lot of our teaching in the West, hasn't it, Sam? I mean, it's just... there has been, starting in the second century, uh, Doug, what, what I'm about to say, you know quite well, but uh, many of our listeners may be unaware that starting in the second century, as soon as the apostles were off the scene, mm-hmm. the last uh, apostle was John, who died probably in the mid-90s of the first century. And while the apostles were still with us uh, here on earth, all the congregations that they planted, all the churches as such, all of them were messianic, all of them were to the Jew first, all of the calendars that they, the, the church calendar had to do with Passover uh-huh. and Pentecost and, <laughs> and the tabernacles. Uh, this was how everything was done. But then in the second century, uh, some, some uh, teaching came about started to develop that was anti-Jewish uh, in its nature and wrote out the Jews from hey, the plan of God. And hey, hey, Sam. Out the Jews the Bible. Hey, uh, Sam, I hate yeah. to break in because I want to come back to this when we come back, but we got a break for the mm. news on the half hour. Sam, I want to go back to what, before, sorry, we had to cut short, but I, I want to go back to this idea of what happened in the second century because I didn't know that. And I really appreciate you bringing that out, that um, yes. after the Church of the Apostles, uh, can you uh, kind of pick it up from where mm-hmm. you were? So here we are. Sure. We have the Apostles yeah. in the Messianic congregations, and then, okay, take it from there. <laughs> yeah, uh, what ended up happening is that people who called themselves bishops, uh, you know, the word bishop uh, is a uh, uh, form for the overseer, uh, the idea of overseers in the congregations. They called themselves bishops. Uh, and in so doing, they wanted to have the authority that uh, and the respect that was once given to the apostles. Uh, they didn't want a power vacuum. 
Mm. Unfortunately, though, they brought in with them uh, traditions that didn't reflect what the apostles taught or how the apostles lived and served. Mm. And so they ended up bringing in all kinds of traditions uh, that were contrary uh, to what how the apostles lived. And so you find a development of of thought, teaching, and activities uh, that ended up becoming anti-Jewish, uh, anti-Jewish altogether. Uh, so uh, by the time you come uh, to uh, the the fourth century, uh, the Nicene Council, uh, they no longer were holding councils in Israel. You know, the Jerusalem Council. Uh, we find in Acts chapter fifteen that was where. Uh, the councils were supposed to be because of Jerusalem and because of God's plan for Israel. Uh, so we want to understand that things so shifted away. Uh, and I have, uh, if they if they want, I can go into a ridiculous amount of detail to tell you the truth <laughs> regarding the, the kind of uh, bad teaching that was given uh, uh, by these uh false te- by these by these teachers some of them were not false teachers they they just taught things that were contrary to what uh the new covenant writers what the apostles would have ever thought or thought about uh would you want me to i've got it before me would you want me to uh, mention some of these kinds of things yeah i would love the, i would love to i would love yeah. to hear that yeah that'd be great oh, oh, okay Oh, well, there was, uh, okay, I have a bunch here. I'm, I'm trying to pick it out so I won't waste my punches, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I want, to, I want uh, people to understand uh, that uh, if they, the, some of them were believers but just had bad teaching and bad understanding about the Jewish people. And so you have someone uh, named Origen. Um, his greatest claim to fame was he came up with allegorical interpretation, mm-hmm. uh, but nonetheless, uh, he was a, a hated Jews, uh, and so he lived from 184 to about 254, something like that, uh, and this is what he wrote. Uh, if he who is commonly called a Jew murdered the Lord Jesus and is still responsible for that murder— Hence, we may see how after the advent of Jesus, the Jews have been entirely forsaken. When God rejected Israel, grace was poured out in the Gentiles. The calling of the Gentiles took a start from the fall of Israel. And so uh, a lot of uh, teaching like that. And then in the, in the fourth century, we have Constantine, uh, those to writing to the bishops, uh, the overseers who had not come to the Nicene Council, uh, he said uh, Easter was declared to be particularly unworthy for this holiest of all festivals to follow the custom of the Jews, in other words, Passover, mm-hmm. uh, who had the Jews who had soiled their hands with most fearful of crimes and whose minds were blinded and rejecting their custom. We may transmit to our descent the legitimate mode of celebrating Easter. We ought not, therefore have anything in common with the Jews. We desire, dear brethren, separate ourselves from the testable company of the Jews. Uh, And he goes on that way. And then, of course, uh, a person in Christendom, uh, a bishop of Constantinople uh, in the 4th and 5th centuries, uh, 349 to 407, he wrote that the the Jews, Jewish people, were driven by their drunkenness and plumpness. Plumpness. Has he taken a look at me? I guess he's right. Yeah. <laughs> and plumpness to the ultimate evil. Uh, they kicked about. They failed to accept the yoke of Christ, nor did they pull the plow of his teaching. Another prophet hinted at this when he said Israel is an option as a stubborn heifer. All the such beasts are... Un-. And then he goes on to say, although such beasts are unfit for work, they are fit for killing. Wow. And this is what has happened to the Jews. While they're making themselves unfit for work, they grew fit for slaughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so, well, so wrote, did uh, did these people, the Sam? Top- just did they disregard Romans eleven? I mean, did they just? Of course, they did. R- write that off. They just disregard it. But listen, many of our listeners, uh, many people in churches, are not aware of what Paul said about the Jewish people and the call of the of the Gentile believers and reaching the Jewish people with mercy. Uh, So Christendom in the sixth homily, he writes, 
This is why uh, you Jews, he said, this fake Christ, you did lift violent hands against the mass, you did spill his precious blood. This is why you have no chance for atonement, excuse, or defense. And so from him forward, there was no, you know, Jews could not be saved as Jews. Uh, and uh, I, I can go on and on. I mean, if they get our materials, we go into these matters. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, you can get more on this, uh, wordofmessiah.org. We have a lot of materials to help you understand. And I say this only to let us know that this does not reflect the Bible. Mm-hmm. This does not reflect the New Testament. Uh, as a Jewish man, I'm a Jewish man, if it was left up to these sorts of people, I would never have come to faith in Jesus. This is just hateful, hateful matters, period. Well, you know, uh, Sam, I, I tell I, people I, all the time that Christianity is not a rogue offshoot of Judaism. It's true Judaism. It is, it is, it is the Gentile being grafted in, and, it, be, yeah. it, and, yeah. and, and, and so— True. If David was alive today, if Abraham was alive today, they would be Messianic Jews. They would be people who, who believe in Messiah. And uh, is well, they, they're absolutely right, Doug, because they were Messianic Jews. In that, as Jews, they had the hope of Messiah. Yeah, they anticipated this. You know, Abraham was. What did, what did Jesus tell us? What did Yeshua say? He said, Abraham was glad to see my day. <laughs> yeah. Abraham was a Messianic Jew. Yeah. Moses uh, looked for the reward. He accepted the reproach of Messiah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he wants to understand that Moses was a Messianic Jew. David, in the prophecies that he had in his writings, mm-hmm. was an Isaiah. They're all Messianic Jews, for they anticipated the coming of the Messiah. And so they would be to this day as well. And so we want to appreciate that. And every believer, everyone who's listening to us now, I want you to just understand uh, that something like Passover, listen carefully, this is your festival. Mm -hmm. It's a new covenant festival. The Messiah is the Lamb of God. He is the Passover Lamb. Passover is a new covenant festival. All believers should rejoice in, though also with all the other festivals. Mm -hmm. This was what was common during the first century with the apostles, that the church substituted with other traditions that got them away from their calling to the Jew first. Mm. Well, one of the things that you do that I really, if you're out there listening, you know, wordofmessiah.org is the website, and you know, Sam and his wife, their primary ministry at Sam, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong in this, but your primary ministry is to train and and really mentor and help Messianic leaders. You build into leaders and church planting. Yeah. And uh, I know you, you, sh- you would share with anybody, but your primary calling oh, yeah. is to that. <clears throat> and so if you want to help the Jewish people, I, I believe, like when I go to India, the best way to help Indians, to reach Indians for Christ, is to help train Indians to reach other Indians, right? I mean, that's the best way. I, I mean, and so if yeah. you want to reach Jewish people, if you want to seed into a ministry to Jewish people, find a Messianic Jew who is ministering to Messianic leaders and planting messianic churches and this ministry is one of them wordofmessiah.org and you can go there and you can yeah. give you can yeah. give to the people in Israel for humanitarian aid they got a button there but also you can give just to Sam and to his um, oh, yeah. wife Miriam and yeah. what they're doing because they have been I ministering know, for 40 years right you've been doing this oh 50 years but who's counting yeah. <laughs> uh, listen we are we are actively planting amongst jewish people let me explain for the folks if i might doug okay our work is to bring the good news to the jew first in other words we're evangelists mm-hmm. we evangelize 
as we bring the good news to our missionaries, our staff, our planters are reaching out to the Jew first. But here's the here's the issue. Once they are saved, now we disciple them. And so if you go online, you'll see our books, Messianic Discipleship and other materials for discipleship. And so we disciple them in order to be grounded and rooted in the faith. Mm -hmm. But let's understand the issue here. When they mature as strong disciples, they become leaders. Mm -hmm. Every born-again believer Mm -hmm. is to be a spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. They are to be spirit-led. They Mm -hmm. need to be led by the Spirit. And they will be spiritual leaders, even if it's in their own home. Mm -hmm. But in any case, they're to be leaders and lead others to faith and lead others to the Messiah, as well as then make disciples using our materials. Mm -hmm. And so what we see in leadership development worldwide is an outworking of discipleship. Mm -hmm. In other words, people get discipled, grounded, rooted, and as they mature, We train them in leadership to be planting and to start new works everywhere Mm -hmm. and to be reaching out with the good news. Mm -hmm. And I want want our listeners to understand their calling. Mm -hmm. They are called to the Jew first. We Mm -hmm. want to help them be an effective witness Mm -hmm. in God's calling upon them to reach out to the Jewish people, to the Jewish people in their areas, in their communities, as well as helping us reach Jewish people around the world. We want to encourage them in their witness as well, uh, and we want to help them to grow too. Wow. Um, You know, can can you explain for our listeners, um, you know, why it's important for there to be messianic congregations that are out there? Maybe instead of, you know, let me let me be very clear on this. First of all, let me first say. Every, every congregation that Paul planted was a Messianic congregation. Yeah. Hard to understand, but it's true. Let's mm-hmm. take the congregation at Corinth. Uh, let's understand the congregation in Corinth, the Corinthians. Mm-hmm. They were a Messianic con- How do we know they're Messianic? Mm-hmm. Well, they were doing everything that Messianic congregations today do. They were celebrating all the festivals. Mm-hmm. When you read through First Corinthians, you see them talking about uh, Passover and unleavened bread in in uh, First Corinthians chapter five, mm-hmm. First Corinthians chapter ten and eleven. They talk about Passover and unleavened bread, mm-hmm. and then we see talking about the feast of first fruits during Passover. That's when Yeshua was raised bodily from the dead. Messiah, our first fruits. Christ, our first fruits from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8, I'll be in Ephesus until Pentecost. Mm. Everybody understood when Pentecost came about. They're following the calendar. They're all Messianic congregations, Doug. And so that's the first thing. And so what we are doing is we are bringing the good news to everyone in our, wherever we plan congregations. They are responsible to bring the good news to everybody in their community, to the Jew first, but not to the Jew only. Mm. God loves everyone. He loves everyone the same. Mm. And so our Messianic congregations are made up of Jews and non-Jews mm. uh, together in Messiah. Can I tell you a funny story? Yeah. In the congregation I planted up in New York a long time ago now, uh, there we had. Well, we always have... Uh, We call them Mm pre-believers. We had some pre-believing Jewish people visiting with us, of course. And one came back the following week with a friend. Mm -hmm. And as they were walking in, I overheard uh, her her tell her friend, now be careful, they're not all Jews, Mm -hmm. but they love one one another, so it's hard to tell. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. That's so we right. love one another. We 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 love. That's how our. So we we dis, we see Gentiles coming to faith. We disciple them so they can be a witness to Jewish people, uh, so they can fulfill their calling to make Israel jealous. Is what Paul wrote to mm-hmm. the Gentile believers. They have a calling upon them. Okay. And so a messianic congregation is not only a place where Jewish people 
uh, can testify as Jewish believers, but it's also a place for Gentile believers to live out their calling to the Jew first. And so we're, well, it depends on the community we're in. We reach out to everybody. So if I was in Mayor Shireen, Jerusalem, and there was nothing but Jews in my neighborhood, the congregation I plant, there would be nothing but Jews. Mm-hmm. But if I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, which has uh, a Jewish community but a lot of non-Jews, I would expect the congregation would reflect just that, uh, with Jews and non-Jews together. Mm-hmm. This is how we have our Messianic congregations as we rejoice in the salvation we have in Messiah. Oh, that's good. Well, listen, on your website, you have uh, conferences, and you have congregational development conferences, you have marriage conferences, you have a Messianic congregation uh, leaders boot camp. Who who can attend these conferences? Everybody. Everybody and anybody want everyone. Listen, we do marriage conferences in order to have stronger communities. Mm-hmm. Because a congregation uh, is no spiritually stronger than the families that make it up. And mm-hmm. so we want strong families. That's why we do our marriage con. We invite everybody to attend it. You can go to Word of the Messiah see our next one coming up in January. Uh, we have other conferences and plenty of them for planters and boot camps mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, we want you to be involved. Uh, God has called people to do these things, uh, ordinary people, because his extraordinary grace is our sufficiency. Mm-hmm. And also, by the way, Doug, I'm invited to speak in churches all around the world, mm-hmm. certainly all around this country. And so in Jacksonville and elsewhere, I uh, invite me to come speak. And our other staff, we have people who can come and present the Word of God and the burden of God's heart. Can I tell you, Doug, my Sunday mission statement? Yeah, go For ahead. For six days, of week, I'm with Jewish people, and on Sunday, I'm with my spiritual family. Oh. But I have a Sunday mission statement. Here's my Sunday mission statement, to bring the burden of God's heart for the lost sheep of the house of Israel hmm. to the hearts of the people sitting in the pews. Hmm. And so I encourage people to invite me to come speak and our other staff to come speak and teach that they might understand God's burden and their calling uh, and understand the roots of their faith through Passover and the other festivals, that they might rejoice and be an even more effective witness. Yeah, so, A lot going on. We invite you all to celebrate. Yeah, so if you are out there, uh, you're, you said your next marriage conference is coming up in January? January, yeah. All right. And, Absolutely. And I'm I'm just guessing, based upon our conversation that you kind of have a little Jewish perspective uh, in regards to marriage when, <laughs> when you go into it. Well, well I, I am Jewish, but yeah. also I see the Bible. You know, Doug, when I first came to faith in the Messiah, I was surprised by two things. Mm-hmm. First thing was when I was reading the New Testament, I was surprised how Jewish a book it is. Speaking mm-hmm. about all the festivals and everything I was acquainted with, yeah. that was the first thing. What a Jewish book the New Testament is. The second thing that surprised me is how many Christians didn't know it was a Jewish book. Mm-hmm. And so I invite everyone to take a look at the scriptures that way. But we look, we have a whole Bible approach to what we teach. Uh, just like the Israel fact you mentioned in my latest book, uh, the seven co- Messiah's seven congregations, talking about Revelation chapters one through three, the seven congregations and how it's a Jewish orientation that'll be helpful for them as well. Uh, but nonetheless, our our marriage conference and all our conference have a whole Bible approach. So you can have a understand the whole Bible relative to our faith and our service in getting the good news out and building strong families and strong congregations around the world. Well, um, you know, he, he, he does have a book called Messianic Marriage Matters that's also on the website, and uh, you can go there. And he's got Messiah in the Feast of Israel, which is another great book, really good resources. Uh, if you want to know more uh, about Messiah, from a Jewish perspective and his perspective on these issues, uh, it's a good uh, resource. Uh, Messianic marriage ma- matters and Messiah in the Israel feast. Well, Sam, I haven't really asked yeah. you how are you mm-hmm. and your wife doing. 
<laughs> how, how is ministry? We are, uh, we are blessed out of our socks. We're seeing so many people come to faith, so many congregations being planted. We see so much going on. We're so thrilled with the Lord. Uh, my wife's next my wife has written a number of books, and for those women who are who are listening, her books are gold. She's just her books are marvelous. Take a look at her materials; they're just used in women's ministries around the world. I encourage you to take a look at her books as well as the ones I've written. Uh, but we're doing great, Doug. The Lord has been so gracious to us. Uh, we bless His name and thank Him so much for the privilege of serving Him. Mm. Uh, well, and I, you know, Sam, I almost forgot. Uh, if you go to Word of Messiah uh, and go to Discipleship Resources, you can click down. Uh-huh. You can read his newsletter, Schmooze Letter, or you can go right. down further to Messages, um, and he does courses there on the Israel Factor, the book we were just talking about. You can yeah. go there. Um, and he's even got a spot for questions about Messiah that you can go to. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, yeah. he says, you got a question, then you can reach out and ask him. But there's a lot of questions that have been asked that I think are good resources. And Sam, Sam we've only got a couple of minutes. For the people yes. out there that are, are not Jewish, and they have Jewish friends, Jewish neighbors, Jewish people they really care about and pray about and want to minister to. What's a good springboard, a good spiritual springboard or starting point for them? Uh, we know prayer, but really trying to make that connection yes. to them. Well, we have materials, Doug, for them. Uh, we have two materials. I would encourage them. One is a small book called Even You Can Share the Jewish Messiah. And then the second resource is called the Messianic Answer Book. Many, many Jewish people, I mean, just many Jewish people have come to faith through the Messianic Answer Book. And they can get Uh, that that at your bookstore? Absolutely. Go to wordofthemessiah.org. We're happy to serve you. Let us know uh, how we can uh, serve you all the better. Okay. Uh, invite our staff let us know pray for us as well god bless you yeah pray for them and if you want sam or any of their speakers to come speak just go to word of org yes. and click on yes. ministry to churches and click on schedule yes. a speaker and they'd be happy to come share sam thank you That's so good. much and i i want to tell our listeners one more time you can go to their website and click on donate now yes. Uh, to to That's give correct. humanitarian aid to Israel, 100% is going over there to humanitarian aid. And uh, Sam, blessings to you, shalom, shalom to you and your wife, and thank you for joining us today. All right, shalom. Be, be be blessed. Hey, uh, thank you, listeners, for listening today to SWAT Radio. Uh, tune in tomorrow. We'll be back from three to four tomorrow. We're on every day from three to four. And if you want to uh, listen to any uh, broadcast the one from today or any past broadcast go to www.swatradio.com that's www.swatradio.com and you can click on the past shows link and go to it thank you for tuning in and uh, remember to pray for the peace of israel